Hello everybody and once again, as usual, I wanna welcome everybody back into the shop. And today I have almost, it's a very exciting uh, project that I'm getting ready to talk about that's gonna be coming up in the future. And it's sitting behind me and of course, no, it's not my tractor. But if you've watched any of my videos in the past, I've often alluded to some things that's gonna be coming in in the near future. And what's sitting behind me is the first part of many that's gonna be showing up in the next several months on some very, very high-end builds that I am absolutely blessed to have the opportunity to work on. So come along with me and I'm gonna show you what's in the crate. And uh, thanks again for watching. All right, I'm just gonna dive right into this thing because it, like I said, it showed up yesterday we unloaded it off the truck, and it's uh, it's been a bundle of excitement for me since uh, since it got here yesterday. And I'm still at this moment, I'm still waiting for someone to pinch me because this really it uh, just feels too good to be true to have the opportunity to use components such as this. So, if you don't know what this is, this is a complete chassis. Now. What's so unique about this, this chassis is designed to fit underneath a car that basically is unibody. And this is a Roadster Shop chassis that uh, is going to be going underneath the project that I'm going to introduce here shortly. But for the meantime, let's walk around and take a look at this thing because it is absolutely stunning. Now, the chassis, when I ordered it, I ordered it complete with with the brakes all the way around it basically has the rear end set up it's all billets the uh, yoke is a billet yoke to handle the horsepower which is going to be i'm going to say for now roughly about 750 horsepower additionally the uh, fuel tank is not here it was back ordered the brakes were back ordered as i said and other than that it's pretty much a turnkey outfit and uh this thing is, like I said, this thing is the craftsmanship and the, the work on this thing is absolutely gorgeous. I did order it as well with the brake line kit, but this car is going to, uh, it's going to have a ton of work done to it. It's going to be a really, really high end car. And what makes this exciting is this isn't the only one I'm going to be building. I'm getting ready to order probably another chassis for another build for the, for the same person. And these these chassis are about a 10 to 12 10 to 12 month lead so like i said if you haven't already jump out there subscribe to my channel because i'm going to be featuring these uh in the next coming months as i start bringing the body in so like i said the first thing i need to do is the chassis behind me i need to get it uncrated and basically uh, I've got some Goonie wheels that we're going to put on it and hopefully get it to where I can actually move it around. The chassis, as you can see, is bare metal too. Another thing I want to do, I have to disassemble this thing and I'm going to scotch bright it and put a, just a, a cheap coat of primer on it because this thing will get powder coated once I'm done with all the fabrication work. So anyway, come along. This is going to be fun.
there's that much of it. So uh, a little bit sketchy using the two post lift with a car already on it, but it didn't seem to didn't seem to bog the lift down. I don't think I had any trouble lifting it up. That's an 11,000 pound lift. And I don't think I quite maxed it out, but just wanted to lift it up, get it out of that crate, set it down on these casters and uh, move it out of the way for now. I'm gonna tear the crate down behind you. I'm not gonna film that, that's gonna be boring. So uh, like I said earlier, I'm gonna end up disassembling this chassis and I probably, I may roll it up front. Um, I don't know if you guys remember in, in some of the early earlier videos I had, I walked through the front of the shop and showed you that this was an area that I was getting ready to start developing. So um, finishing the remodeling, I'm gonna start using that up there for assembly and some of the cleaner work. So anyway, that's gonna pretty much finish the chassis. I think the next thing I'll get completely set up. I'll uh, let you guys see me tear this thing completely apart, which basically I'm gonna do a lot of bagging and tagging of the bolts and take a lot of pictures to make sure everything goes back. It's pretty straightforward, but I wanna make sure all the brake line clips are in the right spot and stuff, but it's gotta come apart because it's gonna be a few months before I'm actually ready for the chassis. And as you know, this is bare, bare metal and I don't want it to rust. So I've gotta get something on it to protect it. And that's the only thing that I see. And I don't wanna spray over all the stuff that's, that's gonna be detailed. So. Whenever it's done, like I said earlier, this thing will all get sent out for powder coating. So anyway, I'm gonna get set up and uh, I'll see you in a bit. Let's go outside and actually see what this thing's gonna fit on. Okay, I had to put my jacket on because it's a little bit of an overcast day here in Oklahoma and it's a little bit chilly outside, but we're gonna walk out back here. Let the uh, camera adjust, but we're gonna walk out back here and I'm gonna show you what this car's gonna, excuse me, what this chassis is gonna be fitting under. And uh, anyway, we'll talk just a little bit about the car that's sitting out here. Now, this car is pretty rough, and, uh, but, and it might be a little bit surprised, especially for the people that really know me. They know that uh, for the most part, I stay pretty much with GM and, uh, and Chevrolet. But anyway, I want to show you this car. And I'll see if I can get this in the camera. Now, I know what you're saying. That is, a, that is a Mustang. That is a far cry. And not only is it a Mustang, but it's a Mustang Coupe. And would you really spend that kind of money to put underneath an, an average run-of-the-mill Mustang Coupe? I would say no. But I had to show you this car so I could show you this car. If you don't know what this car is, this is a 1968 Ford Mustang Fastback. And since the weather's really nice today, I'm out at a good friend of mine place, Terry Walters, and I'm gonna introduce him. He is, if you don't know, in this area, Terry is a, I'm gonna call him an expert when it comes to Fords. And in fact, really any early Ford muscle car vehicle, this man knows his stuff, especially Mustangs. He's probably done more frame off restorations on Mustangs than anybody I know. So I'm gonna basically let Terry explain what this car is and I'm gonna grab the camera. We'll talk about what we're gonna actually do to this car. Well, I am. Terry's just here to make sure I get the project started off on the right foot, but this is Terry Walters, so. All right, I'll tell you a little bit first about the car. Uh, I got this car when I was probably in my late teens. And it was rough. He's that, 35, by the way. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I had about 32 that. And uh, it was a goner at that time. We didn't fix cars like this back then. You didn't have the parts and the things that you have now. Yeah, back then, you could buy that car for $500 yeah, all, yeah. all day long. And so I bought the car for parts. And But the cool part about the car, and the reason I wished it had been saved at the time, was it's pretty unique in its options. It was a J code, which is 302, four barrel car. I, for some reason, well, I was thinking the, the C code. For some reason, C I, code is two barrel. It's a two barrel 289 car, right? 289. And 68, a lot of people don't know this. The only way you get a 302 was to get a four barrel 302. And all the rest of them were 289s. So this was one of the few that had the J code, four barrel 302 come on at the end of the year. And it also had a four speed. 
It was red, can you have a red car? Had a red deluxe interior, which is fairly rare in them. Had the lower console, the upper console, and the fold down. Had a, uh, like I said, four speed and a 350 locker rear end. It's locked, really. Mm -hmm. This and, is all factory. Yes, and it had the uh, handling package on it. So, as far as optioned up, this was a pretty sporty car back in that day. And I knew all that when, uh, and it had the, the uh, disc brakes, power disc brakes. Right. So, but it didn't have air or anything like that. So, whoever ordered this car, and I figure it probably got ordered, uh, was looking for a performance oriented car right. and a sporty car, and they got one. So one of the nice things that Ford did, uh, I don't think GM did this, but one of the really cool things that Ford did, I, I think they do some of the Pontiacs you can get this on, but it's called a, a Marty report. So I don't think we got a Marty report on this yet, but that's the plan. And I'll let Terry kind of explain what the Marty report does, because for for trying to figure the history, I suppose, of the vehicle, that's it's like a must. And I, it props off to, uh, to for whoever decided to do that back in the day, but... Well, a fellow named Kevin Marty actually was contracted by Ford, and he has all the database, and he computerized it, because back then it wasn't, Oh yeah. and he digitized all that, and so it now has all the database for all the cars from 67 up that Ford made. They destroyed the records on anything older than that, so it only starts from 67, so this car, he does have the report on and I think I have one of those reports. I thought I gave you, you one. You may have. I I, I, I got a... That's how I know. Yeah. Of course, part of the reason I know what this car had, but it had the door plate on it. Right. So uh, we could read that and know how that car was equipped for right. the most part when it was new. We didn't know where it went as far as a dealer. And all. Right. So the plan today is, as you can see, um, you can't see, but I got my truck my trailer. We're going to end up... We're going to try to get this thing mobile or at least get it loaded on the trailer. Um, but anyway, I'm going to grab the camera and actually I'll flip it around, but we'll kind of discuss. I'll let Terry, because he's he, this was his plan to, to actually build this car using, like I showed you guys earlier, the gold car. And I'll, I'll let him kind of explain what we have to do. And then then once we're there, then I think we're going to we're going to get busy trying to put this thing on the rotisserie or put it on my trailer. So. I want to also say that about 40 years ago, I wrote this car off. Yeah. Stripped it out, <laughs> took it out to a friend of mine and put it on the side of a hill, laying there in the dirt, and that's where it sat for the last 40 years. And, of course, fast facts come oh, along absolutely. to the point where you think, I, in the back of my head, I thought, I probably ought to go out and check that car out again. So I went out there, still the same place, and drug it out of the dirt and pulled it back here. And then along came me. <laughs> yeah. So it, what's crazy is is – the, the what you can what what these cars are selling for just cars that are maybe just in a little bit better shape these fastbacks they're like a 69 Camaro and I'm not even going to get into the Dodge and Mopar stuff because that stuff is I don't know if it's well one it's it's people's crushing everything but just the price of what people are asking for some of these cars and what some of them are actually selling for it'll it'll amaze you so anyway uh you ready I'll I'll grab the camera and then uh, you can kind of Show them what we're, we're going to end up doing to it. So, all right, I'm just going to walk around and hold the camera. But anyway, uh, the plan is is we're going to take the structure off, and I'll let Terry kind of explain um, the differences in the uh, the fastback and the coupe car. Well, this car was rough. It had a very very rough early life, and uh, it what ultimately did end was this quarter panel got hit. They slid it into something and did a lot of damage back here. And down in the trunk floor, but it had been damaged in every corner. And so when I got it, I just kind of wrote it off back right. then. And uh, then 40 years of sitting out in the weeds have uh, not helped it at all either, although it had some rust on it even back then. And uh, the beauty of it is the platform or the frame, the unitized body for a coupe and a fastback, same thing. Right. The only difference was the upper structure the roof and the fastback part back here with the shorter deck and the extended glass. So what you can do, and there's a lot of people done it, they even make kits to right. do it now. Uh, you can remove all that upper structure, remove the quarters and roof skin, replace that upper structure on a coupe platform that's yep. solid, and then weld it all back together, put new quarters and roof skin on it, 
and you've got yourself a fastback. And so, uh, for the most part, that's kind of the plan. We're just going to use the structure and I already have most of the metal, most of the new metal that's going to go on the car. We've already, matter of fact, I, I, uh, had Terry kind of help me sit down with the catalog. If it was a Camaro, I could pretty much tell you what you're going to need, but. Well, the only part that we're really going to use off this car is this inner structure here. Right. All the fastback stuff that comes up to here where it separates, because this is all the same, all this windshield, all the dash, all the platform, all the frame rails, all the same coupe and fastback. So uh, it'll all go right on there. Yep. Just and, uh, cut this structure off back here. Yep. Comes off right through here. The wheel wells are the same. Comes off across through here. But this is all unique stuff here. The fastback body. All the trunk floor and all this, all the same. Right on. So that's the plan. We're going to uh, we're gonna get this thing loaded up. And then the next time you guys see it, we'll have it sitting over there on that truck and that trailer. And uh, it'll be in the shop. So we're going to get after it while we got the weather. So anyway, we'll uh, see you guys shortly. Okay, I got this thing backed up into the shop and I cannot thank Terry enough for allowing me to bring my cameras out to his place and filming and actually having him jump on the camera. But uh, like I was saying out there, in case you didn't, uh, wasn't able to hear, but Terry is an absolute plethora of knowledge when it comes to Mustangs, as well as anything early Ford muscle car that came out of that era. That guy knows his stuff. and. Uh, can't thank him enough for allowing me to come out there and film. So there's a good chance that at some point in time, whenever I start building this car, that I actually bring him in to consult about some of the stuff because that man has probably restored more Mustang frame off, frame off restorations on Mustangs than most people have ever seen. So anyway, he's going to be, he's uh he's definitely a, a good person to have in your corner. So this is not going to be a factory original 1968 of course you saw the chassis so the uh also the owner has decided to go with the 5.2 predator engine that you see here this is the engine that they use in the gt 500s uh, i think it's the 2020 and up and that's the power plant that he's chosen to get to run with additionally we were going to run the 10 speed i think it's a 10 r80 uh transmission we were going to run yeah, I think it's the 10R80. We were gonna run the 10-speed electronic transmission in this car, and I actually ordered the chassis for that. The cross member came in for that 10-speed transmission, but I'm a little concerned. I'm, I'm hearing that there's still some bugs that they're working out with the 10-speed. And the uh, the transmission controller, I don't know that they they fully have developed a controller that's that works it yet. So we've decided to roll that back to a six-speed automatic we know we can get standalone controllers for that transmission, so I'm in pretty good. I feel pretty comfortable there. But um, like I said, this is definitely there's going to be a lot of one-off stuff on this. I think not necessarily one-off, but for my shop, this is definitely new territory. So um, anyway, uh, as usual, I think uh, this will be a build that uh, I start to feature in the upcoming months. So if you want to watch this build, and and like I said, there's other stuff that's going to be coming that's gonna be this caliber. So if you wanna watch this stuff, 
jump out there and hit the subscribe button and hopefully um hopefully i don't let you guys down whenever i'm putting this stuff together and uh anyway as usual i want to thank everybody for tuning in and uh as always I will, i'll see you on the next build sneeze <coughs> <coughs> dusty <coughs> try this again <coughs>